Peace. Okay, so last night I had did a video um about guilt and forgiveness. And today when I had got up, um I wanted to delete that video to do another video. Actually, I had got a download and a part of me, right, was like, delete the video, right? We aiming for watch hours. But then the higher self of me said, don't worry, you will get all of that and more, but you want to put out quality, right? And so here you guys have it, um, how to let go of guilt by forgiveness. Okay. So brief background of my childhood growing up. Okay. Some of you guys know my story cause I have shared it, um, several times and I'm just going to touch on a tab of it. So when I was five years old, okay, I was um took it, I was taken away from living with my father to go stay in a foster home and later on a group home. The reason being was because the activity that my father would have in his home, and it would be people that were on drugs, um, that would be getting high. It would be, you know, some women that would be prostitutes selling their bodies. And that was like pretty much what I grew up around, right? From, I don't know how old, but I know up until like five years old, right? I was exposed to that stuff. And it wasn't like every day um, it was like that. It would be times like, you know, when my father was in a relationship, he liked it, the company, Okay. Um, and that's what I was exposed to. So how I was taken away from my father and how Dyfus pretty much got involved this day was, um, one day I was supposed to go with my cousin and I believe it was my aunt from my mother's side. And it was like Easter. I was supposed to go and then be returned back to my father's house. But because of things that I must have spoke of, right? Like, you know, when you're a child and people ask you questions, you start saying stuff, right? You just tell, start telling everything, right? Um, so I must have, you know, said whatever and um, Dyfus had got involved. So my cousin, I don't know if it was my cousin or my aunt, but they pretty much... Poor Dyfus, Dyfus got involved. And um, from there, I was placed into a foster home because the allegations, they was like severe. And um, yeah, so that's how I pretty much got into the custody of being, you know, in a foster home and a group home. Later on, um, someone in my family, okay, they had got custody of me. Um after I was, you know, living in the foster home, okay, well, the group home, um, it was my mother's sister, she had got custody of me, her and her husband, and as a little kid, you know, I was happy, because now I felt like, is like a family that I never had, because it was the mother and a father, my mother wasn't there, not because she didn't want to be in my life. Um, she was, she would show, you know, certain things. She would express her love certain ways. And I get into that. Um, but I was living with my aunt and my uncle and I was, you know, happy that, you know, you're a kid, you feel like you belong and, you know, things of that nature. But whenever I did something, um, that I wasn't supposed to do, I would be constantly um, reminded of where I came from. So sometimes my aunt, and I know she did it like in good intentions, but she would say, I'm treating you like this because the way you was being brought up, right? So I guess that was her way of saying, you know, she didn't want me to turn out that way, the way I was exposed to the prostitution and the drugs and stuff like that. 
And so later on, um, after staying with my aunt and my uncle and they children, then I had went to go stay with my grandmother, which was my mother's mother. And when I say my mother expressed her love, right, the way she would express her love was when... So when I was going to my mother's house, well, my grandmother's house, right, um, one of the ways that my mother would show her affection um, prior to going to my grandmother's house where my mother was staying my mother, I would speak to my mother on the phone and she would always ask like, you know, that Friday I would be dropped off to my grandmother's house after school. And so Thursday night, I probably would talk to my mother. My mother would always say, um, you know, what do you want tomorrow to eat or whatever? And she knew like I liked the cheeseburgers. So she would make these like really, really big cheeseburgers and um just the way I like it and she would make fries and stuff so that was my mother's way of expressing that she loved me right um I just want to touch back on what I was saying about when I was saying with my aunt okay and her husband people cannot give you what they don't have right and I know my aunt and my uncle, they did the best that they knew how to do. Even my mother and my father, um, they couldn't give something that they did not have. And, um, but constantly hearing, you know, well, I'm treating you like this because of the way you was brought up. It may. So hearing um, constantly, right? Like, you know. I'm treating you like this because the way you was brought up, that made me internalize, um, you know, like maybe the way I was brought up, it was my fault, right? Maybe, you know, my mother not being, you know, the way I wanted her to be in my life, maybe that was my fault, right? We take on these beliefs, especially as children, because we don't know exactly what's going on, right? And oftentimes what we tend to do is we make somebody else's mess our mess, right? And subconsciously, we tend to do this. And so um, I did run away from my aunt. Well, actually, I was living with my grandmother, um, but I ran away and I started going back to my father's house because I felt like the rules was just too strict. And it's like the more you, um, you know, try to stop a child, right? If you have all these different rules, to me, in my opinion, and what I have done and what I witnessed with my children is the more they are going to rebel, right? Because there's so many rules. And I get it. You know, my family did the best that they knew how to do. So fast forward, I had children. Um, some of you guys know I have four children. And what I seen in my life was I was doing the same exact thing to my children, you know, um, blaming them and, you know, being hard on them, always focusing on what they lacking in, okay, as opposed of, you know, of times when they would be doing a good job. I would mainly focus on the bad because that's how I was you know, brought up, you know, the things that I was doing. And, you know, every now and then it would be praise. So I don't want to make it like, you know, it was no praise. Um, But that's what I did. I started doing. And I remember once I started doing the work on myself, okay? So it's books that I highly recommend. Um, And one of the books is Trust, okay? Another book this book is phenomenal, okay? The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel. He also wrote The Four Agreements. In this book, he talks about people cannot give you something that they did not have to give. And it is so, so powerful. But I had to start forgiving myself because the way I was treating my children is what I 
was exposed to, right? The things that, the way I was being treated, right? Um, and not the drugs and the prostitution, although I was, you know, promiscuous. Um, but no prostitution here, okay? <laughs> but, um, you know, I was doing those things. And I remember when I first started healing myself. And what brought me to healing myself is I wanted different. I wanted change. And I was willing to do whatever it took for me to get different in my life, whether, you know, it was sacrificing the old me, okay, whether it was studying myself, getting to know myself, I was willing to do those things because I deserve better and my children deserve better. And some of the things that I started doing was I would ask my children, how did they see me as being their mother, their parent? One of the things that I do understand now is my children, they don't belong to me. They came through me and I could guide them along the way and teach them the best that I know from my experience. But ultimately, they're going to make their own decisions and choices. And I remember with my oldest son, um, because I at times I used to be really, really hard on him. Because of the things that he did. I didn't understand the more you focused on, you know, the bad of a child, like the child doing, you know, bad things, choosing to do bad things, the more they would engage into it because energy grows where energy goes. And I'm not saying not to call them out on it, but if you ultimately just seeking and looking for the bad, you're going to find the bad. Okay. Um, but I remember one day I was in the shower and I was crying. I was crying so hard. And I called my oldest son, who's 19 now, and I apologized to him for the way I treated him, for the things that I have said to him. Um, and it was really, really painful for me to do that, to apologize, but to admit like how wrong I was, you know. Um, and then with my oldest daughter, who's 17 now, um, one of the ways that we communicate is through writing, because sometimes I'm afraid to voice out how I feel. So sometimes I would write out, um, you know, a letter or whatever. I never want my children to feel like I'm superior, like I'm, um, more than them or I'm higher than them and they feel inferior to me. I never want that. Um, and I had to start forgiving myself. I had to start forgiving myself. The reason being was because I could have not taught my children anything new because I wasn't learning anything new. So once I started studying myself and, you know, showing up for myself, willing to do the work on myself, then I was able to teach them something different. I even told my youngest son, I mean, my oldest son and daughter, I said, listen, you got to change the programming that I gave you because it's wrong. Okay. And hearing them and letting them voice their opinion about how they see me as a mother. Um, at times you don't want to hear it. Right. But what I know to be true is if I give my two oldest children, let them have a voice about how they feel about how could I be a better parent? Because I think sometimes us being parents, we feel like we doing such an amazing job. And sometimes our children, they would have a different opinion about that. And so I would ask them, like, how do you feel about me being your mother? Sometimes I would hear I'm controlling. Sometimes I would hear I'm not allowing them to get the freedom. And we would meet somewhere in the middle, right? We would come up with a strategy And after we do the strategy, and if they still don't follow the curfew, then I know it's them, not me. But I let them make their choices. But I wasn't always like this, okay? It took learning, me understanding myself. And sometimes I still get it wrong. But you have to forgive yourself. You have to to let go of the guilt. Because the guilt is really what's eating you up inside, okay? You forgive the people who may have hurted you, betrayed you. You may felt like they should have done a better job, but they couldn't. They could not have done a better job than the job that they did. And the same thing with you. 
you could have not done a better job because you didn't know how to, okay? You didn't know how to. It was You was operating from your subconscious mind. Yeah, the, the part of you where all the habits are. And if you don't change the habits by studying, by reading, by listening to positive affirmations, and that's what I do, okay? I listen to stuff that is going to cause me to grow, okay? That is going to push me. And if you're not doing anything different, you're going to keep getting the same exact thing. And so I had to face myself. And I had to apologize to myself for beating myself up, for feeling like I should have done a better job when I didn't know how to do a better job. If I did know, I would have been doing it. But then I started studying. And then I started doing a better job. And now I have two smaller children. See, when you ask your children, especially if you have other children, when you ask probably the oldest children, how do you feel about me being your parent, right? You don't, it's not so much for them. It's more so for you. So you don't do the same thing towards your smaller children, right? Because sometimes we so, we do things from habit so much that we think that's the real us and it's not and it's really not so to to the person to the parent that's out there that is growing through it understand honey you got to forgive yourself also what I started realizing was what my oldest daughter because she I would like to say she is really my twin flame okay um is a lot of things that she do that I done when I was you know her age um, except for the pregnancy things. Um, but what I seen was that she was rebellious. Okay. She was feisty at times disrespectful. Okay. Um, and what I noticed was that she's her own person. Okay. And the choices that she makes, she had to live with those choices. But if she knew better, she going to do better, okay? And it's not justifying it. It's not excusing it. But one thing that I do know is that our relationship improved tremendously. Why? Because I started letting her make her own choices. Why? Because I started surrendering the control. Because either way, your children, they going to make their own choices regardless. Our job is to love them, Okay. Love them, protect them, clothe them, shelter them. That's our job. But if they start doing things different because they like, you know what, I'm grown. I want to do what I want to do. Then they make their own choices. And in the words of my grandmother, one of the things she used to say was, you make your bed, you lie in it. And that goes for all of us. I even tell my children the choices and the decisions that I even made, I am held accountable for. Because I never want my children to feel like, you know, well, it's only me that's going to be held accountable. No, I tell them I the choices and decisions that I make, too, I will be held accountable to. And so with that being said, I hope you guys got something from this. I love you guys. Healing may not be the easiest thing. But it's the thing that's worthwhile. When you start facing yourself, when you start getting to know thyself. Getting back to the real you, which is love, is really love. Your whole entire life is going to change. And you may be afraid to do some of the things because you don't want to surrender. You don't want to give up the control because you've been doing it for so long. You think that's you, but it's not. It's belief systems. And with that being said, in order to free yourself, you got to forgive yourself. In order to be free, you got to be you. Okay, in order to be free, I have to be me. But who is that me? Ask yourself that question. And with that being said, I love you guys and I catch you guys on the next one.